All right, welcome to Driftwood Guitars. My name is Chris, behind the camera is Matt. As always, today, doing a little video for those of you that maybe don't do instrument building, but you do instrument repair, or just own a guitar and you have caused an issue and you're freaking out because you don't know how to fix it. And that is the very typical, I have dinged the soundboard on my guitar and I'm pissed off and I wanna know if I can fix it. It's a very common thing that used to come to the shop when I did repair work. This particular guitar is uh, a client of mine who I built the, um, for those of you that have been on the website, the guitar with Bob Dylan on the fingerboard. Um, this is another one of his guitars. It is a Martin D35 50th anniversary. A great little guitar that has been through my shop many times just for like setups and things like that. And he called me up and said, man, I did a ding on the guitar and I think that I am, I've messed it up and I need you to fix it. So he brought it here and told us what happened. And it's pretty typical, I think, you know, taking it out of the case. Matt was telling me, he told Matt the story uh, and the lid kind of started to close and the little latch kind of dinged it right here. And uh, not a big deal. It's really, not, I see this thing all the time. So I go, yeah, it's no big deal. Of course, he's going, oh my God, have I just ruined my guitar? Um, but the reality of it is this one actually looks perfect. This is like, the best case scenario for you if you're doing either repair work or you're trying to fix your own. And if you look at this one, I don't know how well it's picking up on camera, you can see that um, it's really kind of just smushed the lacquer, <laughs> for lack of better word. Is that uh, a technical <laughs> term? a technical term, it's smushed it. <laughs> yeah. And, but the important thing is it hasn't broken through the finish um, and it hasn't really kind of uh, smashed the fibers of the wood down. Uh, so what we're hoping for is that I'll be able to do a repair on this without there being any visible damage whatsoever. So that's going to be really cool. Um, worst case scenario is it maybe did crack the, um, the finish just a little bit and the fibers have a little bit of damage to them. And in that case, we'll have just an almost invisible repair. Um, but uh, so what we're going to do in this video is show you how we're going to go about doing this. And you can apply all these techniques to your guitars. Um, specifically, this video is going to be for guitars that have nitrocellulose finishes on them. Those are a little bit more forgiving for doing the repairs because when we do the drop fills on this to uh, to fix the finish, um, the lacquer that we drop fill on it is gonna blend and melt into the lacquer that was already there. If you are doing the same techniques to a guitar that doesn't have nitrocellulose finish, the only difference is instead of using lacquer to do your drop fills, you're gonna be probably using either super glue or a compatible finish for that particular guitar. So do consult the interwebs to find out what kind of finish is on your particular guitar before you do this at home. Um, but yeah, so tools you're gonna need for this are a iron, and as I always like to joke around, the best advice I can give you is to get your own iron. Um, here's how, here, listen, this is how this works. You go to Bed Bath & Beyond, say, here in the States, and you buy your wife or your spouse just a really nice iron, like a, like a BA iron and you'd be like look honey I bought you this iron uh, as a gift because I love you so much and then you take said old iron and that becomes your shop iron <laughs> and then you don't get yelled at for it <laughs> no harm no foul no harm no foul and you've done a good thing right you've gotten a wife your wife or your spouse a nice gift uh, a spray bottle with some water inside of it and for me I like to either use like a terry cloth microfiber cloth or these these are the Scott brand um, shop rags, shop towels. Uh, they're like just really high, like uh, heavy duty paper towels essentially. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin steaming this out. Um, we've had this iron on for about five, 10 minutes now. It's nice and hot. And um, we need to start trying to steam this out. This is one of those unknowns. How much are we gonna be able to do of the steam out removal on here? Best thing for you to do is to try to tackle the repair like this immediately after the dent happens. So if you're trying to do this to your own personal guitar, like if and if you've got some time, try to do this right away because you're going to get better results on a really fresh dent because there's still memory in the wood. Um, and when you go to steam it out, it's going to be a lot quicker to respond to it. In this particular case, this is probably a few weeks old, so who knows how well it's going to do. Um, what we're going to do is apply a little bit of water to um, the shop rag. What I like to do is just apply it kind of to the corner. Of course, my spray bottles. I swear to God, this never happens. Uh, <laughs> we're going to apply some water to the corner there. And I'm going to apply just a drop of water to the spot where we're going to do the repair. Um, 
Mind you, we need to be careful that we don't melt the lacquer. You're probably gonna get a little bit of um, softening of the lacquer on this particular finish, but we just wanna be very mindful of it not to. You just wanna stick the iron on there and just let it cook, because you're gonna burn the lacquer and you're gonna have more troubles than you started out with. You also wanna be conscious of where this is happening. If you're doing it on somewhere on the guitar where there's glue joints, you don't wanna heat it up for too long because you don't wanna soften up the glue and then create even bigger problems. So what I like to do is get that iron nice and hot to the point where when you apply water to it, you immediately get a steam off. That's the level of heat that you want um, for lack of uh, giving you a temperature range. Once it steams off like that, you're good to go. So using this iron just on the tip, just the tip, uh, <laughs> we are gonna, I'm not even putting any pressure on it right now. I am just touching it enough that we're getting steam. And I'm gonna keep lifting it off and checking. Mm hmm she's looking good. What tends to happen is you end up kind of almost getting like um, an imprint in the lacquer of like the actual fibers from the, the paper towel or the cloth that you're using. Um, it seems to be working really, really well. Now I'm gonna begin applying a little bit more pressure to try to flatten it out. Dude, this is coming out good. <laughs> we might not even need to do much of a drop fill on this. Nice. That's one thing I do miss about doing instrument repairs is that like every single job is completely different. And I always, I used to say it was kind of like triage. <laughs> You just kind of have to use the skills that you have developed over the years and just figure out how you can implement them for that particular repair. I applied a little bit more water because my rag got a little bit dry. You do not want to be doing this without any water because um, you can start to really mess up. Your paper towel can actually start to stick to the lacquer and then that's a whole thing. <laughs> Being careful, um, I think it's probably picking up decent on this camera, that we don't want to accidentally have this part of the iron touching down here where we're not doing the repair. That's why I try to just keep it kind of like just the tip towed in on it, just in that one particular spot. You can also do this with a soldering iron if you have, if you prefer to do that um, with the flat tip on it. I'm trying to make sure that this is looking good. It's looking pretty, pretty good. that you're gonna find that you need to do this multiple times. You saw that I applied it once, and then I'm applying it again. The more and more you do this, the more it starts to even out. You get like diminishing returns on each time that you do it. The first time you do it, that dent's gonna lift out a whole bunch, and then it's slowly gonna just give you less and less, but keep doing it, and you're gonna be surprised at how much better it's gonna keep getting. Um, this is warm, but it's not crazy hot. Nothing down here feels super hot, because my main concern on where this particular one is is that I don't wanna heat up this area over here because we do have plastic perfling. We don't wanna melt that perfling. We also don't wanna have um, any sort of delaminations of the glue. So just be conscious of, like I said, where you're working that you're not creating more damage than you started out with. And I think, this feels like a cooking show. <laughs> you're gonna wanna preheat your oven to 450. <laughs> This is looking good. It's weird because like if I catch it in this light, it looks perfect. As I move my head over here, it starts to catch a little bit of white, um, which I think that is just um, issues with the lacquer has become delaminated from the actual um, spruce itself. So I think that I feel really good. The What was a dent is now actually a high spot. There's actually um, a, a raised up spot on this finish. Um, so I think that we're good um, with the iron. Um, notice that when I have done feeling for it, I'm feeling with the outside of my hand here. It's just more sensitive to, to heat, just to make sure you're not getting too hot. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Unplug your iron, don't burn your shop down. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Chris Alvarado, 2021, don't burn your shop down. It just is a hard, fast rule, don't burn your shop to the ground. <laughs> um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab a straight razor with some tape on it, and we're gonna begin leveling this out. Um, to scrape this down and get it nice and flat. Um, you almost have to cause a little bit of damage to reveal 
where their actual damage is before you can move forward with it. It feels a little bit destructive, but we really don't know how much of a finish repair we need to do uh, until we kind of scrape back some of that raised up spot that's on the lacquer. Um, think of it in two ways. We're doing the wood repair first, which is what we just did, uh, and now we need to do the finish repair. Um, so let me grab that razor blade and we will uh, address this. All right, so I'm gonna take just one of these straight razors. These are like the Stanley brand, uh, just straight razors. And then I just, what I tend to do is put a little bit of masking tape on them. Um, and all I do the masking tape for so that I don't accidentally gouge up the, the finish on each side of it. And then you're just gonna apply a little bit of bending pressure to it. Oh, the lacquer is soft right there. I'm not even bending it. I'm just slowly knocking that down. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of bending pressure to it. I'm kind of feeling with my hand to see if we're starting to get it nice and flat. We want to be, um, there you go. It's one of those jumping razor blades. <laughs> uh, you want to be careful that you're not getting too thin on this finish. You don't want it to get to the point where, you know, you, you're getting down to bare wood. That's definitely not something you want to be doing. So I'm feeling just the slightest of low spots now. The only thing that's a little bit different here is that we are, like I, I don't know how it's picking up. Matt's kind of running the cameras here. I don't know if you can see that it's a little bit lighter colored right there. Can you tell? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I said, I think issue there is that we do have some delamination between the, um, between the lacquer and the wood itself. So what we should be able to do now, I assume, and I can't see it particularly, but I think that there's probably a crack in the lacquer. There should be probably a slight crack in the lacquer so that when we go to weep in a little bit of lacquer into there, it hopefully will then kind of weep into that crack and just underneath it and fill in that void that we have um, and then bring that color back into it. Cause that's what it looks like to me. It feels nice and flat. Um, and now we're ready to do that drop fill, I think. Another thought that I have, and I'm just thinking out loud as we do this, is that you could possibly even take a razor blade and intentionally chip out that lacquer um, and that way you're for sure gonna get the, the, the new lacquer up underneath it. Um, I think what we'll do is do the drop fill just directly on top of it for now and see if we can get it to wick into it. Maybe I'll thin the lacquer out a little bit with a little bit of lacquer thinner so that we can increase that viscosity or reduce. I always get those mixed up. Increase the viscosity. <laughs> increase the viscosity. Uh, and get it so that it, w it has a capillary effect and really sucks into it. So just those are the kind of things you need to be thinking about. Don't just blindly come into your repair um, because I said to do it a certain way because your dent is going to be slightly different than mine and different than everybody else's. So you need to be kind of thinking about the mechanics of how the lacquer is going to interact with the finish, interact with the crack, all of those things. And... Uh, I have no structural concerns. It's, this is purely at this point just finish repair. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of my um, my Cardinal nitrocellulose lacquer with a little bit, probably like a 50-50 cut of, of lacquer thinner, and we will start doing a little bit of a fill on that and see how it looks. Let me get all that stuff out. Okay, so what I've done is I have taken some, some nitro lacquer, like I said, and cut it almost 50-50 with lacquer thinner. But then I was just kind of thinking as I do this, like what else do I need to think about? So I've actually added some retarder to this. Um, I talked about the importance of retarder in my video on spraying sunburst, but if you've never worked with retarder um, and you're spraying lacquer, you need to have it on hand. A little, a little can of it like this from LMI last year, a year. Uh, but this is super advantageous for us in this case because what I can do is add retarder to it and really slow down its cure time, which is gonna give it that much more time to burn in, melt the lacquer that's already on this guitar, and hopefully bring the color back to it. Um, what I like to use is these little um, these little bulbs. 
uh, yeah, we'll hold it over here. These little um, bulbs that allow me to just do nice easy drop fills. Um, another option that you can do this with is these little drop fill sticks that Stu Max sells. Um, I don't use these nearly as much. I don't think I have as much control. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna suck up a little bit of this and we are just going to drop fill. I'm trying to get it on top of where that crack is. I'm not even squeezing the bulb. I am literally just kind of spreading it around and letting it wick, wick in. Don't mind my neighbor. <laughs> And this is, I think that you can get a sense, even just in this little thing that I'm doing, of how much uh, a uh, the, the, the retarder is going to give us an advantage here. So I'm not seeing it breaking through. I'm seeing it break through um, where the little slight crack in the finish is, but I'm not seeing it break through where the uh, that light spot is. So what I wanna do, it seems a little unorthodox, but I'm gonna take my razor blade and I'm actually just gonna there we go. I'm gonna run that razor blade right along the lines where the grain is. And I'm actually cracking open that finish. Just where this repair goes. And what we end up with is a, a nice wicking effect uh, into it. And if I hadn't added that retarder to this, we would probably already be at a point where it's starting to set up a little bit and not doing what we want it to do. We want to keep it playing nice with the lacquer that's there. And it is a slightly darker than the original lacquer, but that's just kind of part of it. I think that's probably good. Make sure you don't have any air bubbles. Yeah, it's gonna be darker, it just is. Sometimes you end up with a situation like this where like the wood soaks in the lacquer differently than the original um, spray coat that, like in this case, that Martin sprayed. So it just is a little darker right there. What we need to do now is we're gonna let this dry at least overnight, um, probably for a day or two. I, I prefer to let it, like if, if a client drops a guitar off like this, be like, it's gonna be at least a week before you get your guitar back. Um, as soon as they walk out the door, go ahead and do what I've done so far in this video and then let it hang on the wall or put it put it back in the case and let it dry um, so that when you go to do our drop fill level sand um, and our scrape down that we know that, that lacquer is super dry and you're not gonna end up with a low spot. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll move this aside, let it dry and continue this video here in a split second uh, a couple days from now. <laughs> and so, <laughs> the magic of, the magic of, of stuff. Yeah, but the, the magic it, of cinema. Yeah, I'm a little annoyed that it's a little darker there than I'd like it to be. Um, but that's part of repair work, man. You're, I, I, what are you gonna do? You know, I can't control um, that that's just a slightly darker spot now, but that's, you know, curb expectations for clients if you're doing this too, that sometimes, you, you, I always tell folks, I don't know how invisible I'll be able to make the repair. We'll, we'll just have to see what the guitar does, you know, um, do your best obviously, but, and this might lighten up here in the next couple days. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you in just a split second uh, with a slightly longer beard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we're back. It's been six months. Um, the lacquer is thoroughly dried, and now we're ready to do the level on it. So I uh, just came from the basement, and um, things look good down there. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Matt's over here dying off camera. <laughs> so dumb. Um, but so, yes, we have done the drop fill. I had to do a couple more drop fills. Um, the wood just kept wicking up more of that lacquer, which is fine. So you're just going to be keep paying attention to it, topping it off. Um, about two days ago, I did the last drop fill on it. Seems really good. And the really exciting thing for me is that that discoloration, that dark spot that we had, completely went away. So now I look like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here, folks. Um, so what we have is um, obviously the soundboard, and then we have this high spot where that drop fill was. Um, you want to make sure that every spot that you have drop filled is actually higher than the original surface. Otherwise, this next step is not going to do you any good. And what you want to do now is get yourself a razor blade, a straight razor, and then put tape on each side of it. Um, like we talked about earlier in this episode, get yourself a new razor blade, I find. Um, and we put the tape on there just to protect it, and we're going to 
hit the spot where we have done our drop fill and just try to get that nice and level. When you first get started, be very gentle. Don't put much pressure on it because we don't want to chip out any of the uh, any of the lacquer. And we'll go the other direction. And now I'm going to start applying some bending pressure to the um, razor blade. Go a couple of different directions. Now making sure you're using a new razor blade is going to ensure that you don't actually just scratch up the surface of your guitar. Sometimes you'll find an old razor blade sitting on your workbench and try to do this with it and you won't realize that the razor blade's got like little nicks and stuff in it and then those nicks are going to scratch the crap out of your guitar. So don't do that. Use a new one. It's just a good insurance policy. As Matt likes to say, cheap insurance. Too bad razor blades aren't cheap, otherwise that saying would have some merit. So as we do this, you are gonna to start to see the surface of that lacquer that was shiny start to get dull. And that's it's a good way that you can read the finish to tell where, where the low spots are, where the high spots are. And uh, Matt just made a point about what looks like scratches. And yeah, they're small scratches, they are. And we're gonna sand those out. But what I'm talking about with like scratches is like some stuff you can't recover from. <laughs> These are uh, just very small surface level scratches. And it's looking very nice. I'm having to do this like at an awkward angle so we can actually shoot it all on camera. <laughs> So as you do this, it's going to dull out and it looks, starts to, you can see that the whole thing is completely flat. Now, it feels flat on the razor blade, but I'm running my finger across here and I can actually feel that there is just a little bit of a low spot inside there. And what that is, and this is pretty common with these drop fills, is we have a spot on here where there was maybe some small air bubbles inside that lacquer. And by scraping off that top layer of the lacquer, we've now revealed the air bubbles. So unfortunately what that means is I'm gonna need to do one more drop fill on this and we're just gonna let it sit overnight and then we'll be able to do another level sand. But if you don't do that now, what you're gonna end up with is buffing out this guitar, doing all the sanding process, and you're gonna end up um, still having the low spot and it's gonna be the super visible. Um, it's so just do it, take your time, do it right. I know that it's super boring and kind of sucks because you're like, you're ready to be done with this project and now you gotta do a drop fill and it's gotta just sit there and you're literally watching paint dry. But that's part of the process here if you wanna do this right. So what we're gonna do is like I said, just get a little bit more lacquer, do the drop fill and you will see me in another day uh, with a slightly longer beard and even fresher underwear on. <laughs> okay. It's been, uh, what, two days? Yeah. Two days since the last one. I have since uh, gotten some overalls. You can't see through here. But uh, Matt's turned me on to these Carhartt overalls, and I'm an overall man now. I've decided, for those of you that don't know, overalls is kind of like, I think, how women must feel wearing like a skirt, because it's very freeing, and I feel great. Better than I have in years. A little sidebar there. <laughs> so what we did is we added a little bit more lacquer drop fill to this spot that we saw. Um, and, and, and I encourage you guys to take the time to do that because now we're, we are at, I think, about a week from the time that we initially started steaming this out to the time that it's done. Um, so if, if you really want to do it right and make it as invisible as possible, then you're going to want to take the time. If you're in a pinch and you just want to protect the wood, then you can kind of skip these last few steps where you're really filling it and making it perfect. But I think it's going to be good now. So we're going to keep doing what we already did with our razor blade and just knock that down flat again. Um, so yeah, just just like we did in the, in the, the previous little segment there. I'm just going to kind of start scraping away at it. Hopefully, it looks and feels good. Yeah, this is, what would you say, Matt? That dog will hunt. <laughs> we want to be careful. These, um, this specifically, these Martins. Um, they have a real thin lacquer on them, which, um, like, it's thick enough. It looks great. Um, but you just want to be careful that you don't razor blade too much so that you get down to the bare wood. You get down to the bare wood, um, 
you're going to be, oh, it's a whole nother, that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> that's a different video on how to do uh, finish repairs. But uh, that looks pretty good. We're going to get it to like, I would say probably 90% of the way to flat. Oh yeah, there it was. That was the move right then. It looks, looks good, feels good. Um, and now what we're going to do is put the razor blade down, step away from the razor. And yeah. And now we're gonna switch over to sandpaper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with an 800 grit. All I have is 800 in my um, for my dual action sander. So I just cut off a little piece and we're gonna start with that. Um, we're gonna do this first one by hand. I'm just gonna use just the tip of my finger. And very, I'm not applying almost any pressure here. I'm just gonna do a small circular pattern. I've actually got a little bit of, um, of a little bit of soap inside this water too. So it's not just water, it's water with a couple of drops of soap and that acts as a lubricant. Just a little bit. We're trying to remove those initial scratch marks at this point that we just added to the finish with the razor blade. That's what this 800 grit is doing here. If you're working on the edge of the guitar like I am, be careful that you're not coming off like going over the edge of the guitar with your hand because you're going to cut through that finish super fast in that area. That looks pretty good. All right, so we've got the 800 grit done. And what we're going to do as we start going, we're going to do 1,000 grit. Um, we're going to do 1,500 grit and then 2,000 grit. Every time that we do that, we're going to make this circle larger and larger and larger. So even though we're just doing a repair that's, you know, the size of a dime, we are by the time that we're done, the area that we're going to have sanded is probably going to be six to eight inches in, in diameter. Um, it's just a process that we use to feather it. We're going to just be feathering this repair to a larger surface area so that when we buff it out, it's kind of a much broader average. That's to me the real way of doing this so that you get it so that it's as, as invisible as possible. Um, so we're going to switch over to a thousand grit. You could use a backing block here if you wanted to, but this is not, I don't see a need for it in this particular case. I'm just gonna use my hand. I kind of just have the weight of my hand on it. I'm not pushing at all. That's the hardest thing to convey in these videos is like the how much pressure you're putting down. So I'm slowly kind of getting outside of the area that we started with. Just getting larger and larger. A little bit more water. The water is crucial here. Water is going to help evacuate uh, any of the finished particles and keep you from scratching it any further. So do not try to do this dry. Um, that's my biggest piece of advice I would give is don't try to do this without water. You're going to end up just scratching the crap out of your finish. We're gonna switch up to 1500. It, you would use 1200 grit here a lot. I don't have any 1200 grit right now, so that's why we're not doing it. Um, I know some of you guys might be wondering where you, if you've never gotten into woodworking before and you're looking to just be repairing like a ding in your own guitar, where do you get sandpaper like this? Um, not just particular round stuff, but just square pieces. Um, you can go to like your, um, here in the States, like uh, Advanced Auto Parts, um, O'Reilly's. O'Reilly's are the best in my opinion. You're gonna to go to like to the paint department of an auto parts store. Um, O'Reilly's always has the best paint department and they have like packets of like um, like 600 grit all the way up to 2000 grit and then they have this 3M Trizact sandpaper which is 3000 and 5000 grit you, you can get them there at your local store so you don't even have to go to like a specialty place um, to get this paper you're not going to find it at your big box hardware store usually but um, usually at auto parts stores um, is where your best bet is um, so we're going to switch to 1500 grit because I don't have 1200 grit. I'll spend a little bit more time with this than I would if I had the 1200 grit. Oh 
she's looking good. Um, on these on guitars that are of any age, really, if it's more than a couple years old, uh, if it's a lacquer finish, you're going to have, that top's going to have the little shrink back sections on each grain of spruce. And when you go to do this, it's going to get perfectly flat again. It'll look a little bit different. But if you give it another couple of months, it's going to start to shrink back again and look just like the old original finish. So don't worry about that. You're doing great, Matt. <laughs> okay, looks good. I'm gonna switch over to um, a 3000 grid, I believe. Um, I'm gonna, I think, use my DA sander for this little next step. It's just gonna take this next step and really speed it up for me. Um, I use the, uh, the Festool RO90 sander, which is friggin' awesome. I don't expect everybody to have one of these. Um, I would do the same thing by hand. I'm just gonna do it quicker with this. Um, this will be the 3000 grid, the 3M Trizac sandpaper. I'll put links to, to this particular paper in the description on this video as well. So we're gonna use water as well on this, nothing different. Oh, she looking good. Hey, right, before I even get um, before I even get to wiping that off, remember we have a, a repair that's the size of a dime. But in the end, I ended up yeah, I ended up doing a section of the guitar that's 12 inches like in size. So that's how as I've started sanding, we got larger and larger and larger. It's the best way to ensure that you get as invisible of a repair as possible. A lot of times at this point, what I'll do is um, this works out for us because we have video lighting set up over here, but we this is called glancing light. I'll close one eye. I'll get to right where I can see a nice glare on here. Close one eye and then look at it. And that's going to really tell you whether or not you have any scratches in that spot. And it looks really good to me. So at this point, if you don't have a buffer, um, you would do this, but you would hand rub this out. But we're going to go over to the buffing wheel real quick and just hit it with a medium and a fine compound. And uh, we'll basically be done at that point. There's a little bit of some uh, some uh, low spots in there, like microscopic ones where there's some dust inside of it. But those will come right out and look really good once we go over to the buffing wheel real quick. But uh, it's looking real nice. Uh, just a couple more steps and it'll be almost completely invisible. So we'll run over there, do that, and we're going to be done. You guys saw me do the quick buff out on my buffing wheel. Nothing special there. We used a medium compound and then a fine compound using the Minzerna uh, dry compounds. Uh, for those of you that don't have a big buffing wheel, and I assume most of you probably don't, um, you can go same thing when you're at uh, you know at the auto parts store. You can get like a medium, a fine, and then like a swirl remover wet polishing compound, and either use an automotive buffer or you can just do the whole thing by hand and you just hand rub it. But I think that it actually came out really nicely. Um, obviously it's not absolutely dead perfect, but with these sort of repairs, the thing about repair work is you never know what the final result's gonna look like until you're done. And sometimes it's invisible 
Other times it is super visible, but you're kind of, it just is what it is. That's the thing about repairs that can both be rewarding and incredibly frustrating. Um, you know, sometimes the wood will soak up more lacquer than you want or soak up not enough lacquer or you'll end up with air bubbles or your crack looked invisible when you originally had the wet lacquer on it, but then as it dried, it became more visible again. Um, and it can be kind of sometimes frustrating. In this case, I wish it was a little bit better looking, but I'm actually pretty happy with it. Um, you know, I always tell my clients when they bring a guitar in that... I can't guarantee that it's going to be completely like new again. And you know, you, they shouldn't expect that it's going to look new again because it's not new anymore. Now you've got damage that you're having to recover from. So it's part of the patina, if you will. But uh, I think you guys hopefully learned a little bit of something here. It's not rocket science. It's just a matter of being patient, just like everything with guitar repairs. Don't be afraid to try this yourself. I mean, the best client that you can learn on is yourself. If you mess up, you mess up. Um, you'll learn how to recover from mistakes and, and uh, learn what the expectations should be. This was just about best case scenario um, where we had damage to the lacquer. Um, it really hadn't damaged the wood and we we're able to do a steam out and then just do a couple of drop fills and it looks pretty dang good. And I think that... Um, the client's going to be pretty happy with this. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, let me know in the comment section how you would have done it differently or uh, what you thought of the whole process. And uh, we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks, guys.